Hey everyone, for this tutorial, we've just put all the chapters into one long video, but if you sign up to become a member of Anchored Outdoors, you can access Will's entire series, which is split up in easy to follow chapters. There's a bunch of great stuff on there, so feel free to check it out through the link in the write up below. In this tutorial, we're tying uh, George Kelson's Pit Croy Fancy. Uh, the Pit Croy Fancy, um, I don't think it's a very well known pattern, but I really like to use it as a practice fly to hone my skills uh, because it has a lot of elements of classic salmon flies. It's got an underwing, uh, it's got sides, it's got a cheek, it's got a mallard roof, um, it's got uh, a, a fairly broad wing in it, it's got a tail veiling, a tail hackle, and of course tinsel body. Um, it's a spade type fly and it swims quite nice. Uh, we tied this guy, uh, this is the actual fly that we tied in the video. Um, you'll see I did crowd the head just a tiny bit. That's one thing that you're going to want to learn to avoid when tying classic salmon flies. Um, but yeah, we tied this for fishing and, um, it's a excellent fly. I like to swing for steelhead. So for... The materials in this fly, you're going to need um, medium uh, flat silver tinsel. You're going to need oval silver tinsel. You're going to need red yarn. You're going to need golden pheasant uh, crest and tippet. You're going to need heron hackle or blue-eared pheasant as a substitute. You're going to need uh, guinea hackle for the throat. You're going to need pintail or teal for the sides. We're going to need bronze mallard for the roof, probably fairly small. And we're going to need some jungle cock for our cheeks. And then, of course, for our wing, you're going to need either um, turkey tail secondaries, which I like to use because the fibers are much uh, softer and easy to work with on a smaller size fly. Uh, this The fly that we tied in the video here is about uh, a size one. That's a blue heron size three. And then, of course, you're going to probably want to have some wax on hand. Uh, you'll see in the video um, that comes in quite handy for uh, doing the wool head on the, uh, on the fly. In this video, we're going to be tying the Pit Croy Fancy. Uh, the Pit Croy Fancy is arguably a spay fly or a spay type fly. Um, it has a lot of the same attributes, but a fancy wing. Uh, it's a it's an excellent fly to begin practicing tying classic salmon flies because it has a lot of components of a classic salmon fly, and a lot of the techniques are. Uh, very similar, um, but you don't end up using any fancy materials. Uh, so it's, a, it's an excellent practice fly. So to begin with, um, we're just going to start our thread. And because this fly has a tinsel body, we're going to have to be really careful um, with our thread wraps here, keeping them perfectly side by side as we work our way back. Now, um, I like to set the wing really low on this fly and in order to do that we have to set the tail a little bit ahead of the hook point. So I'm going to stop my thread right about there, uh, maybe go back a little bit further, right about there so we have a little bit of gap in between our thread and our hook point so our, our butt and our tail are going to be about right here. So what we're going to need for our, our tag here is our silver tinsel. 
uh, medium silver tinsel. And to get started here, we're gonna put a really sharp edge on our tinsel. It makes it easier to tie it in. So as you can see, we have a nice sharp edge there. So we're just gonna tie that on right on that sharp edge. And just as we go to wrap it, we're gonna do a couple thread wraps as we wrap our tinsel just to tack it down. Now, this um, being a fishing fly, uh, I, I tend to like to put a, a dab of glue underneath uh, the tag on tinsel tags. Um, that way when the fish bite, uh, <clears throat> bite down on it, they don't end up pulling it off because that does happen a lot of times. So we're just going to put a little dab of Zappa Gap on there tiny wee one and then on the rest of the thread here we'll just put a little bit more zappa gap okay now before that dries we'll just start wrapping this and you want to make sure that when you wrap your tag that the tinsel is nice and edge to edge and when you cover that glue just want to wipe that off with your fingers. And then we're going to work our way back. Nice and edge to edge. Now, when we get up to here where we tie it in, we're going to unwrap all that thread. And then tie it back over top or tag end. And try and make sure you tie it off on the side or the bottom so it doesn't uh, interfere with the tail. Uh, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to add our tail. So I have two different options for tail length here. We're going to check the first one here. So that one there might not quite be long enough. So that one's a no-go. You want to be just past the bend of the hook. So we're going to go with this guy here. And sometimes these like to rotate, so we just slide it back into place with our thumbnail. There we have a nice, nice taper over, goes just past the hook, the bend of the hook. So that'll work, work out well. And sometimes when you, it's easiest to adjust adjust these tails with a bodkin once you get the thread wraps on it. And you can kind of push them around and get them exactly where you need them. Because they don't always cooperate. There we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our tail veiling on. Uh, our tail veiling is just a piece of golden pheasant tippet. So when we do tail veilings, I like to select a really, really small um, tippet. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. You can uh, actually clip off some of the fibers and just tie it in like that. Um, I do that sometimes. And then the other way to do it is you can strip the uh, fibers off and actually tie in the whole, 
tie in the whole feather. So once we get it stripped off, it'll basically look like this. And we'll just clip that stem off. And I'm just gonna bend this back a little bit so that it's a little bit more cooperative. And then we're just gonna drop that on top. And when you do this, be sure to trap a bunch of the fibers. Don't just tie it in on the bare stem. As you can see, I've got some fibers trapped right here before that stem starts. And then that way you get a nice, nice little tail veiling over top like that. And just put a couple extra wraps on there just to make sure that's tacked down well. Now for the butt on the pit cry fancy, uh, we need some wool yarn. And the other way you can do this as well is you can actually uh, split your thread like that. And you can put some uh, seal fur dubbing in there and, or mohair and twist it and create the butt out of that. But um, on this fly, I'm just gonna use uh, the red uni yarn. So I'm just gonna tie it in on the bottom here. And then we'll just wrap it ahead. Now one of the things I like to do with these wool butts is I actually like to figure eight them just to create a little bit more bulk. So I just kind of go over that way and then over that way and then tie it off. And you kind of want to clip this off on the side so that that way you don't interfere with tying your rib on underneath. Um, because one of the things uh, that we've talked about before with flies with all tinsel bodies um, they really show up all your all your mistakes underneath. So we're just gonna tie this in. This is our medium oval silver tinsel. And I'm just gonna wrap our thread nice and side by side, all the way up till it gets just to that return edge. And then a lot of the time what I do just uh, creates more bulk on the body. And I'll just wind it back, try and fill in any little gaps. Once again, nice and side by side. Next thing we're going to do here is we're going to tie our body on, which is our medium flat uh, silver tinsel. But before we do that, we have to prep our heron feather. So we're just going to split it up near the tip like we always do. And then just very gently fold it back. So now that's ready to go. And then once again, we're going to take our tinsel and we're going to cut it on a really sharp edge to make tying it in easier. And we're going to a little sharp edge there. And then we're going to tie it in on the bottom.
Okay. Now. Got to be careful not to overlap our tinsel at all. And I'm going to wrap nice and side by side, going to the back. And one of the tricks about doing tinsel body is you always want to make sure that you have a lot more tinsel than what you need because you need to be able to pull on it fairly well in order to keep the body nice and tight so you don't have any little deviations and then you can use your scraps for uh, tips and just make sure check all the way around that you didn't leave a little space by the butt there And we're going to work our way forward. Now, as always, we're about our second turn of our rib is going to be. We're going to tie in our hackle. So I'll just get that out of the way. in so that it kind of meets up with our our return eye here so we just kind of got to slide it up into place without losing it and then wrapping forward once again, being careful not to overlap. And just unwrap all of that tinsel that we tied down. with a few good wraps. For our hackle, because I wrap my thread towards myself, I'm gonna take my hackle and I'm gonna wrap it away. So I'm counter wrapping my hackle. And we'll just make sure to wrap our, our hair in here nice and evenly, folding it as we go. There's our hackle. Now the next thing we're gonna do, get our bodkin all ready here. Just move this up out of the way. And then we're gonna wrap our rib.
and try and make sure that your spacing is about the same as your hackle. I always pull super hard on my rib just to kind of make sure everything's set in there because your rib is tying that hackle down so it fish's teeth don't don't break it. If you have any stragglers you can just pop them out. Make sure everybody's in place. Now, normally one of the next things you would do is um, wind on your throat, but I'm gonna teach you a different technique here uh, for putting your underwing on uh, first before you do your throat. And the only reason we do this, and I don't actually know if this was historically done or not. Um, I know it's a technique favored by Mike Redendich, but um, one of the reasons that we put the underwing on first is to keep the underwing really low over the body. And I favor this for fishing flies uh, because we want to keep them really lightly dressed. So in order to keep that really low and keep the wing low and have a nice sleek profile on this um, spay type fly, uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're, we're going to tie this underwing in first. So. You're, you're going to want to get um, really long golden pheasant tippet. So from way back on the bird, uh, the, the feathers towards the very back here, the, the really long ones. Um, now, the reason we want to do this is because if you look on our feather here, um, it's extremely thick back there. So if you size it to the hook and you take shorter ones, um, what you're going to end up doing is, is you're going to end up tying it in on this thick part of the stem here. And it's actually, it's quite flat. And a lot of the time it doesn't, it, it makes it quite difficult to cooperate. So we always line up this bar here with the butt. So as you can see where this is going to line up on our tie-in point, the stem is quite thin and it's really easy to manipulate and the stem all, almost becomes round right about here. So it, it's a lot easier um, to, uh, to work with. So what we're going to do here is we have our, our pair here and we've line them up back to back, making sure that, you know, bo both feathers are very similar. Um, and they line, they line up quite nicely. And on fishing flies, like when I'm tying these in bulk, I, I don't get too crazy about uh, lining up the, the bars if they have a little bit of overlap, whatever. But um, if you want to make your fly look nice, like when we start tying presentation flies in these videos, we're going to want to make sure everything is set up properly. So we're just going to make sure everything lines up here and then holding them as a pair, you're going to strip off the feathers like the, they're the, the barbules like that. And then that way you can kind of measure everything. Strip some more here. And 
and sometimes we get rid of these things and make our lives a little bit easier. So that looks about right there. So I'm gonna pinch that. I'm gonna take a whole bunch more off the top. Okay. Now I'm just gonna give these a kink here. And then I'm gonna measure again. And we're gonna cut these off. Now, oftentimes these little guys like to overlap. So you gotta, gotta make absolutely sure that they're not overlapping on you. Now, I'm not going to lie, these little guys can be quite tricky. There we go. I'm not quite happy with that, so I'm gonna pinch that off and I'm gonna strip some more of that off. Now you can attempt to do that ahead of time before you try and mount them, but I actually like to do it on the fly so that I know my sizes are just right. go. Now for our throat here we're going to want to select a guinea fowl feather that has a really skinny stem on here so we don't build this area up too much. Now you'll notice that we've left a really long area here. Um, that's because this fly has a wool head so we actually have to leave a bit of room um, because there's an awful lot of stuff that goes on in the front of this thing. So you're going to want to space the guinea fowl out a little bit so that it doesn't build up too much of a bulk. Now at this point you got to be kind of careful when you're tying this on because it can't, you can move your underwing and once you move your underwing you're, you're kind of screwed. So you have to be a little careful here. Oops. So, wrapping forward here, folding as we go. And I like to do about three wraps. See, so I already moved that. Uh, 
Oh, maybe I didn't move it. That's good. Now we're going to put our bodkin in the middle here. And when you do this, be careful once again, you don't bump your underwing. I'm just going to give that a good squeeze. There we go. Now for the wing on the Pit Croy Fancy, we're going to need mottled uh, dark turkey. Uh, one of the things with using turkey tail is turkey tail can be very stiff and uh, rather uncooperative. So one of the tricks for tying on smaller flies, um, this is a full-blown turkey tail here, and you'll notice when you when you go to use them, they're 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 very stiff fibered, and they're far better off being used for for big flies. Um, I don't have a dark um, dark turkey tail on me right now. This is a, a light cinnamon, but you, you get the idea. But um, the, the fibers are very, very stiff. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use uh, turkey tail secondaries. Uh, the secondaries are very, um, very fine, um, very easily uh, manipulated. So we've got our secondary here and we're just gonna measure, measure our length. And one thing you gotta be aware of um, with these underwings is here's the, the tip of our tail and our underwing, tip of our underwing is actually higher. If you stick a straight edge over top of it, you'll see that. Now you wanna keep that curvature nice and low. So sometimes when this is sticking up too much, you might actually have to cut the stem off right about here um, so that this is actually lower. But um, having, having the full stem on there actually helps with a little bit of stability. So when I put the wing on here, I'm actually hoping that the wing is gonna push down a little bit on the underwing here, just to kind of uh, manipulate it in place a little bit more. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna cut my slips off the turkey tail secondary. So there's one slip. And then off the other side, we'll cut the other one. I don't want these too, too thick, um, but being that this is a secondary feather, uh, these are very fine fibers, so they do condense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick these back to back. We'll try and do this in a material prep video. So there's our, our turkey tail slips back to back. We'll just make sure they're, oops. Make sure they're perfectly equal here. So we got one a little bit bigger than the other one. Or no, maybe not, those are just the same size. So we're just gonna drop this on top and make sure our tips line up with the tip of the tail. And you just want, when we go to put this on, we just want the bottom fiber here to just kind of cover the center of the hook shank. You don't want it to drop down and you don't want to set it, you don't want it to sit up top. So we'll just rotate this, make sure the other side is the same. It's not, so. Set this again. Now, one of the tricks to, and this is exactly the same for a married wing, one of the tricks to putting this on here is kind of 
pinching it down. Just gonna get it over this underwing here. Cooperate. Now, to get it to cooperate, we're just going to pinch it down like this and grab and hold. And then a couple of loose wraps and cinch it straight out. Now, you see how that fell over there? That rotated. That is the last thing we want. So we're just going to undo that, pinch it down again. I'm going to try one wrap this time, see if I can grab that. There we go. Now, one of the tricks with mounting these kind of wings is whatever your butts do, your wing's going to do. So if your butts are nice and straight, like these ones are here, they just kind of crushed, then your wing's going to be relatively straight. I'll just flip this over and give that a check. It looks okay. There's our wing. The next thing we're gonna tie in here is the sides. Now the sides are usually uh, some sort of waterfowl, whether it's teal, uh, pintail, wood duck, gadwall, etc. And uh, sometimes the sides are married with uh, guinea fowl or wood duck teal. But in this case, for the pit cry fancy, our side is just a slip of pintail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little piece off of each, each feather here. And just like we do with all waterfowl, we're gonna clip the stem off instead of clipping the, the fibers off. So there's our, our one side there. And we're gonna take our other one. And make sure they're relatively the same size. So there's our pair right there. One's gonna go on one side, one's gonna go on the other. So I always like to do my back side first. So the opposite side that we're looking at here. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm just gonna shape it, get that nice downward curvature. There we go. Now this slip might actually be, I'll do the front side here too while we're at it. There's our front side. Uh, this piece might be a little big for this fly, but we're gonna go with it. So, before we tie these on, we're actually gonna clip the butt ends off here. Now you don't have to do this, you can clip it all at once, but I actually prefer to clip them off first and you can use a razor blade too, of course. And like I said, don't be afraid to have a little longer head on this kind of fly because this does have a wool head and wool heads are, they can be a little tricky to put on. So, Next thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna put on our, our side. Just make sure all of our throat is out of the way. We're just gonna tie this in so it goes just past that first bar 
on our underwing. Once again with the soft loop technique. I don't like that, that didn't tell you in the way I want it to. See if third time's term here. There we go. And sometimes you gotta just stick your bodkin in there. And just manipulate the feather down a little bit. That's seated just about right there. And as commonly happens, our underwing gets a little messed up. There we go. And now for our front side, Make sure it's shaped again properly. Just check the back here for our alignment. one just a little bit. There. Oh, still too low. There we go. And just make sure both are in line. This guy's being a pain, so we're just gonna pull him out. And of course, mess up our entire wing. Get everybody back set. And there's our front. So, no. Next thing we're going to have to do here is actually clip these off. So, that one, and that one. Now uh, for the next part of our pick very fancy here, we're going to be putting on our uh, jungle cock here. And these are what we call our cheeks. And so we have one from each side of the bird. So we have our hackle here, so we'll take one from this side and one from this side. And as you can see the curvature here, so this one is going to go on this side. And this one here will go obviously on the other side. So I'm just going to put these together. 
just line them up and then we'll just strip off our our fuzz here make sure they're identical length and then one thing we can do here we can just press our thumbnail into the back of them just to get a nice curve so it presses into the fly now you can tie these on with the stem intact but I actually prefer to trim the stem off the stem does make it easier to hold on to but I like to just put them on with my my finger like so and so there's your I'll just adjust my camera here there's your backside we'll flip this over once again we'll dig our thumb into the back of it place it on wraps there we go for the next part of the pit croy fancy we're going to put on the mallard roof. Now the mallard roof is two little slips of mallard that just kind of cover up about a third to a half of the wing and they just go on, well, the roof of the wing. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a nice small pair of mallard here and you want the fibers to kind of not be too long because once again uh, you have to tie it in very close to the stem. So we're just going to get our mallard here. We're going to strip off the part that we're not going to use. And strip off the back. And then the other one. Now instead of Doing this how we do the spay flies, we only need one little slip from each side. So we're just going to get one thin little slip here. And then one from the other side. Okay, now going to put some curve on this. And just check it. Now when you go to tie this on, you almost have to tie it a little bit further over than you would like it to sit. So I'm just going to place it on top of the wing and tie it down so it's almost on top of the head and then we'll just rotate it into place. And then oftentimes you have to do some adjusting to kind of get it where you want it to be. Now it's okay if it doesn't quite set where you want it to to begin with because what the other one is going to do is actually push it into place. So we've got that first one there. And we're going to take our near side and this side might be a little too thick so it's going to Trim a bit of that off.
just take our bodkin and try and slide this back into place up top. Now, putting on a mallard roof um, definitely takes practice. And in some videos down the road here, we'll, uh, we'll tie some simpler flies that don't have as complex a wing that you can practice on. And there's our mallard roof. Doesn't really want to stay here, so we're just going to pull that up with our bodkin a little bit. There we go. Next thing we're going to have to do here is ever so gently trim our stems. without moving it. And once again, you can use a razor, but I tend to always use scissors. Now you'll notice how on this fly I've got a really long head here. Um, now that's by design because we're going to have to put a, um, a red head on here. So what I'm going to do at this point, um, just to change my, my thread over, I'm just going to put a little dab of glue just on top here. Just to kind of hold the gel spun in place. And we're going to take our black thread. Now the next part of our fly here is our crest. So here we have our GP crest. Just make sure that the tips of the tail crest and the topping crest meet up. So we're just going to put a little kink in there as you can see. I'll just lay that on there gently just to see if that's going to fit. Strip off a little bit more. I'll put that down. And we'll just slide that into place with our bodkin. Now, when you have it pop up like this, one of the things that you can do is you can just take your thumbnail and just gently press it into the back of the crest like that, just to get a little bit more of a curvature to it. And we'll put it back on. There's our topping. I'll just cover up any excess here. And 
And then for our final part of our fly, I'm just going to tilt this guy up a little bit, make my life a little bit easier. And what I've done, um, we're going to take our red uni yarn here. And the uni yarn is two strands. So what I've done to make my life a little bit easier is I've actually taken and separated the strands. But first of all, I'm going to put on some wax. And the reason we put the wax on is just to make the underside or the area underneath your wool just a little bit sticky so that your wool doesn't slide off. And making it, when you split your wool like that, it makes it a little bit easier to tie it on. And we're just gonna do a few wraps like that and bring it down to the bottom. off on me. That's the problem with wool heads. They do that a lot. Once again, we'll just do a few good crisscrosses on there. And there we have our pit croy fancy. As you can see, the uh, crest tilted on me a little bit, but we just stuck it back into place. And that is the finished fly. <laughs>